Hello, everybody. Keaton Gilogoli with you, and today we're joined by uh, Nuts shortstop Johnny Adams. Johnny, how are we doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me, Keaton. Good to finally see you virtually. <laughs> yeah, always nice to see some uh, friendly faces. Where are you hold up right now, and, and what uh, what's your quarantine situation at the moment? I am actually in uh, Massachusetts right now. I'm at home uh, where I grew up in my parents' house, so uh, we're quarantined here, and um following strict guidelines in Massachusetts, but uh, we're, all, we're all safe, so um, we're pretty, uh, pretty fortunate. So, Yeah, how much space do you have, and how much are you kind of able to get out of the house and try to get a little work in? I can get, I can get a good amount of work in. I'm pretty, uh, pretty fortunate, like I said. Um, I work out in the garage, do some garage workouts. Don't, don't have too much equipment, but I have enough to, to get by, um, so it's pretty much all I need. And then we have a little bit of space in the backyard, and I have a net out there, so I'm able to to throw into it, uh, hit into it, uh, all the essentials. So it's good. I'm able to get my work in, and um, it's good to spend time with the family, even though uh, the circumstances aren't aren't too great. But uh, what's some of the equipment that you have uh, in order to lift? You said you had the net for swinging and throwing, but what's some of the workout equipment you have available to you right now? Um, I have light dumbbells. Um, they don't go heavier than 10 pounds, <laughs> but, uh, I actually, uh, I have, a, an easy bar curl, um, 25 pound plates. Um, I'm able to use a Yeti cooler as like a bench. Uh, so, um, making the most of it. Um, got a couple like Swiss balls that I use, uh, medicine balls and yeah, I, I think I have all the, all the essentials. So, it's it's uh it's holding up for now. We'll see as the weeks progress. Hopefully, uh, we can come up with something new. But um, how is it keeping your swing intact right now when you're not being able to see live pitching? Um, it's a little bit difficult. Um, obviously, you want to be out there, obviously playing right now. Um, but yeah, it's it's uh it's difficult. Um, swinging off a tee every day kind of gets it's boring and monotonous. But um able to make able to make the most of it like i said um just take some dry swings take swings off the tee uh, my uncle has a cage too which i forgot to mention so i'm able to go down there he lives about a town over and um can get some bp when i want to so it, it's it's not 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 too bad but uh like i said we'd rather be obviously playing and competing right now so who are you communicating with uh, from the Mariners and from the organization? Who are some of the guys that you've been uh, talking to? And who are some of the people that have been giving you advice about how to stay in shape during this time? Um, Michael Sadler, he's been, um, he's been a huge help. He sent me a bunch of programs uh, to go off of lifting wise. And um, I've been on the phone with, with Denny a bunch. Um, he's just kind of um, keeping up to date with me and what I've been doing and kind of filling me in on, on new info and, um, Talk to Jack Larson, uh, Rochi, uh, Lewis Boyd, um, uh, a lot of a lot of my buddies from the team, and it's been good to to keep in touch. So, yeah, what's it like working with Sadler in this scenario? What are some of the things he's doing for you, and how has he been a help as you have tried to stay in shape with limited resources? So he um, basically reached out to me right when I got home, actually, which was which was awesome. Um, and I was able to get a program from him. He was able to just type it up online through a, a Word document and send it over. So he sent about five days worth, five, yeah, five days of, of program. So um, kind of just using that um, to go off of for um, not every day, but f uh, five of the seven days. So, so it's, been, it's been good um, just kind of utilizing all that because Mikey's a smart, smart guy and he, he's been a huge help in, in my career so far. So what's the communication been with uh, Denny about? Has it been more about, you know, life or, or are you guys able to talk a little bit about baseball? So what are you, what are you talking to Denny about? Uh, a little bit of both. I mean, I have a good relationship and, um, you know, we're able to, to talk about anything really, but um, baseball wise, uh, just kind of keep me in the loop, uh, keep me up to date with what's been going on. Um, nothing really too new that you probably haven't heard. Um, you know, hopefully try to shoot for a season in June or July. Um, that could be a little bit optimistic, but, um, it would, it would be nice to obviously get going as soon as we can. Um, obviously it's, it's about our health and I think that's what 
everyone's prioritizing is the player's health, with, uh, which, you know, makes you feel good at the end of the day. And, and I also think that's the most important thing. So. Now, one interesting aspect that's going to come out of this is the limiting of the MLB draft. You know, that's something that's already been agreed upon, and we know for sure it's going to be a little bit shorter this year uh, than it has been in years past. And you're a guy who was drafted in the 20th round, coming out of Boston College. You know, you're a college guy. What kind of impact is that going to have on guys and on college baseball as we move forward into this year and next? Oof, I think it's going to have a, a major impact. Um, Obviously, you hate to see seniors lose their, that final year, but obviously they're getting another year eligibility. But um, it's definitely going to make things interesting and make it a little bit more difficult uh, for for teams and and picking guys that they wanted to that they you know didn't get to see play this year. Um, I'm not too sure how it's going to all unfold and play out, but I know that if I was a senior and this was all happening, I'd, I'd definitely be uh, panicking just a little bit. Um, but at the end of the day, you, you really can't control the circumstances. So you just kind of have to go with the flow, I guess, and, and um, let everything play out. You know, one of the things we're going to lose with the limiting of the draft for this year is those draft day moments, you know, a moment you had as a, a, a 22nd round pick in, in, uh, in 2017 I mean, how, how special was it for you even though it was tw- the 22nd round I and mean, how special was it for you when you got yet that name called it was a uh, very special uh lifelong dream uh come true so um yeah I can't really it's hard to describe the feeling um some you work for your whole life so uh, I was just I was at home actually when I when I got the call um I was able to celebrate with my whole family here um but yeah, I, I I can't I can't imagine for for people that don't get that experience. Um, but hopefully, you know, they get to fulfill their dreams still by by playing and and professionally, and hopefully get a chance uh, someday in the big leagues. Uh, I'd like to uh, go back to spring training and ask you what it was like that the uh, like the the day baseball shut down. Oh, it was it was crazy. Um, so yeah, we were. We were in a meeting kind of going over what we were going to do in, in the coming weeks um, because I think MLB had just announced that they suspended the season or at least postponed it for, for two weeks, I think was the initial um, postponement. And um, we were getting ready to just stay there, um, prepared to, to work out for in small groups. They wanted us to come in small groups and then um, – Jerry DePoto actually relayed the news to us that uh, we were all going home. So we were kind of getting ready to stay and um, work in small groups, kind of go in and out of the facility for however long we needed to until things changed. But then that very same day that we were getting all that information, we quickly found out that we were going home. So it was a quick change of events, I'd say. So what was it like immediately after that? You realize you're going home. I mean, are you just kind of packing up and jumping on a flight? Or what was the timeline yeah. of events right after that? I got on the phone and actually I booked my flight that very, that, uh, very same day. Um, I didn't want to risk anything by staying out there because I didn't have a place to stay. I was just in a hotel. Um, so they were able to reimburse me for my flight in the Mariners, um, which is huge. So. I was able to just book my flight that very same night and uh, landed early, like 1 a.m. in the morning in Boston. So it's unbelievable, really. Well, let's get into some positive memories. Let's dive into 2019 a little bit. What are some of the the favorite memories you have from from last season? Oof. I I definitely would say bus karaoke is always a a good one off the field. Uh, I know you've been a part of that one. that's just one um, on the field. We had like, I think we had a good stretch of, of walk-offs. Those are always, those are always uh, good times. Um, kind of just miss the boys, miss being with the, miss being with the guys and team chemistry and all that sort of stuff that goes off the field. You kind of take it for granted and, and you realize in times like this, how, how important that stuff is. So I, I miss all the guys and, uh, obviously miss playing and developing those relationships and bonds. 
Uh, one one of the uh, one of the exciting wins that we've been able to highlight recently was that uh, nine run comeback in Lancaster. It was the oh, yeah. first se- first series oh, yeah. of last uh, of last season. What do you remember about that comeback? Actually, I wasn't playing that day, so I got to watch everything fr- from the bench, watch everything unfold, and uh, it it was weird. Like uh, when we started to chip away and come back a little bit, everyone's kind of like, "All right," and. Uh, I just remember when we came within like four or three, I was like, yeah, this, we, we got this game, like no doubt. And uh, sure enough, we were able to prevail and, and end up making that that big comeback and um, knew from there that I uh, was playing definitely with a special special group of guys. So, Joe Rizzo had said that uh, Jose Umbria, the hitting coach uh, from the Nuts in 2019, was one of the most vocal guys in the in the clubhouse and in the locker room while you guys were making that comeback what do you remember about his demeanor during that comeback he was just being typical umbria uh you know how he is he's he's always loud positive energetic saying some stuff that no one really understands sometimes but gets everyone fired up um he's a he's a great guy and and he's always he's always fun to be around he's very passionate about the game and uh I don't exactly recall what he was saying, but I'm sure it was it was something to get the boys fired up. Yeah, Joe said he was running around saying that uh, this is going to be the greatest comeback ever. This is gonna be the greatest comeback <laughs> ever. <laughs> I'm sure he was. I'm sure he was. Uh, also thinking back to last year, you know, you talked about the guys a little bit, but one of the things about the the team from 2019 it was it felt like it had a, a unique clubhouse culture. And, you know, clubhouse culture can sound very cliche when we're talking about it, but how did you see Denny set the tone for the clubhouse during 2019? He definitely set the tone. I mean, he's just like Umbria. He I mean he's he's positive, energetic, um, loves when guys come together and as a group and able to do like funny funny stuff like bus karaoke or random dress up days or Fourth uh, of July dress up, uh, all that sort of stuff, kind of brings us together and uh, allows us to be goofy, allows us to forget about baseball for a little bit. But then on the baseball side of things, um, he's, a, he's just a great leader and he's able to to share so much information and knowledge that, that he's learned over his career uh, playing and coaching. So um, he's definitely able to, able to set the tone. And um, yeah, I've, learned, I've learned a lot from him the last couple of years playing under him. So. He's been he's been a huge help. Oh, uh, one of the things I find interesting about your baseball career is that you know, you're not a, a national name that everybody across the country is going to know right now. But if you look at your entire baseball career, you got a chance to play at Boston College. You were a captain yeah. there, where your dad was as well. Yeah, you, know, you had a chance to play in the Little League World Series. Now you've had a chance to play a couple of years in professional baseball, and you know eventually we're going to be back out on the field, but. In some of these quiet moments when you think about everything you've been able to do in the game of baseball in your life, what are some of the things that stick out? Oof. Uh, that's a tough question. I mean, there's a lot of things, a lot of things that stick out. I'm just, I'm honestly just very fortunate to, to have the path that I've had. Um, you know, when I, was in, when I was in high school, I, all I wanted to do was play college baseball. I didn't know if it was Division three, Division two. Division one, JUCO, whatever. And um, my freshman or sophomore year, when I started to develop a little bit more, um, Boston College was a team that reached out to me, and I knew immediately that I I wanted to go there, um, follow my dad's footsteps. And that's um, what I did, and I had the best four years of my life at BC, um, especially on the field. Great group of guys. And everywhere that I've gone from high school to college to uh, the Mariners, I've developed relationships that um, I couldn't have developed anywhere else. I think baseball is the greatest game for networking and, and getting to meet people and develop relationships. So I think, I don't know, it's just all that sort of stuff, being able to um, you know, meet people along the way and, and develop lifelong friendships, relationships, guys that you can always call. Um, guys that you can, you know, lean on anything for. So I think that's what sticks out the most to me and not even so much the baseball part. Well, Johnny, we really appreciate the time. Thank you for uh, taking a little bit of time out today and, uh, and chatting with us. What do you got going on the rest of the day? 
Uh, today, uh, it's a pretty light day. Wednesday's my, my lighter day, so um, probably help my dad around the yard. It's, it's, it's a nice day. We had a storm the other day, a lot of twigs twigs out in the yard um, from, from the trees and branches and all that stuff. So I'll probably quick, quick cleanup will do. Well, Johnny, thanks again. Stay safe and uh, enjoy the time with your family. And before you know it, we'll be back out on the field. Thanks. You too. Thanks for having me, Keaton. Appreciate it. John Thurman Field is the place for fun.